Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial video on my YouTube channel. My name is Mr. Olu and this is VIX Tutorials. So in today's tutorial video, I will be teaching you how you can create a simple poster Nike shoe design on CorelDRAW. You might be wondering, this kind of tutorials you must have watched them before or you must have seen them before and there's nothing new to come up. But don't worry, I will be to show you what to be doing differently in today's tutorial session. So without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay, so as you can see right here, we have this our shoe which we'll be using and we have this other one right here with us. So now you might be wondering, these two shoes are the same thing. How come this is different and this is different? Well, that is because I edited this particular shoe. Don't worry, the screenshots on the parameters that I use in editing this shoe will also be made available for you in the description. So just, and that brings me to the point where if you want to follow up in this tutorial video, the materials, the source materials that I used in creating this design will be made available for you and uh, made available to you. All you just need to do is go over to the description and to the description area and you see the link to where you can download the materials that I used for this tutorial video. So now we have this our shoe right here. So if you want to edit this to become this, use the parameter that will be shown in the description. So all you just need to do is go over to the shoe because this is the one that will be made available to you. I won't make the edited one available for you so that you can be able to know how you can edit it yourself, okay? And you can even tweak it to however you want. So you just have to tap on the shoe, then you go back to effects, then you go to adjust, then you go to image adjustment lab. So the moment you go to image adjustment lab, just impute the parameter that you'll be seeing in the, in the description box or one of the materials you'll be seeing in the description box and just apply it to the shoe just put in the, the the parameters and you get what i was able to get you know with this shoe so now let's put this aside so there's something i'll be doing here today which is to create margins now this is something i've not really done before but i'll be doing today so first of all let's create our box we'll be using for here so i'm using 1000 by 1000 pixels by 1000 pixels so just press P and snap it then remove the outline okay I just remove the outline so I take this my rectangle then I bring it to this point and I snap it to the edge then I bring up my ruler and I snap it also I've created out margin then I take this one then I also um, bring out my parameters uh, sorry this is my my stuff here then I bring it this way and I snap it to this side. Then I bring another ruler and I snap it also. Then I take it, then I rotate it and go 90 degrees. So I rotate it and go 90 degrees. Then the moment I've done that, I take this and I drag it up and I snap it here. Then I take this upper ruler and I snap. Then I do the same for the down parts. Just take it, it snaps and I take. Then I snap it also, and I've been able to create my what? I've been able to create my margin. That means there's nothing I'll be designing that to go outside of this point and outside of this point. So now that I've created this, let's just um, uh, clip everything into this particular uh, workspace. So now many people don't like power clipping when they are designing. I just love power clipping. Everybody have the method of using correct draw. This is my own method. I prefer that when I want to design, I just I'll clip everything and start designing instead of designing outside and after designing I start selecting what to power clip inside what to delete and all that but no I prefer to put all my rubbish inside the design okay I prefer to put all my rubbish inside my power clip then I finish designing so once I finish designing I just click on finish and I'm out of my power clip I can export now why I normally do this is because I hate deleting elements because I never can tell you know when you're designing ideas come in they flow in they flow out you understand me so i never can tell when maybe a better idea might come later and i might need an element i've already used in that design this might make me to go and start recreating that element and that might be a waste of time so i just prefer all the rubbish should be inside the power play so that in case a new idea comes all i just need to do is maybe copy that page go back to the next page and then just do the new design new idea that pops into my head so i'm going to create what we're going to be using for our background today okay then press p now, like I said earlier, we're going to be using these two as our gradient. So I'm going to draw 
uh, I'll go to my ellipse tool and I'll draw a circle that I'll be using for, for to create our gradient. And I go over to my interactive view tool, or you can just tap the G on your keyboard, and I'll take this take it this way to create a gradient. And I come in down here, okay? I'll come in down here, tap on this black uh, colored area, click on this area, then I go over to my color eyedropper tool, then I select this one, then I come over here click on this top part which is showing white I also do the same thing my color dropper tool then I select this one and I've created my gradient and that is it I remove the background sorry the outline then all I just need to do is I, to, for me to just apply this gradient into this background I just select on this then come over here just drag it into the background and I've created my what my background then I remove the outline of this so the next thing we are going to do is we're going to bring in our text Okay, we're going to bring in our text. Uh, the text we'll be using today will just be just do it as as um just do it. That is the text we'll be using for today's tutorial. So I'm just going to bring it in, just do it. So the font I'll be using is going to be called is going to be called um Futura is the font for um uh, for Nike Futura Extra Black Condensed. That's the font I'll be using, Futura Extra Black Condensed. So I'm going to drag it up a bit. Now to make sure you, you, you work on the kerning, you come over to your Shape tool and this part, you know, activate so you can just adjust it anyhow you want. So I'm going to center align this. So I come over here to horizontal alignment and I click on center and I place it at the center. And the next thing I'm going to do is to enlarge it a bit. Okay, I'm going to enlarge it a bit. I uh, place it at the middle. Now that I've done this, I'm now going to break all of this text apart. Okay, I'm going to break all of them apart by using Ctrl K. And this has broken when I use Ctrl K, this top part has broken down, has broken away from this down part. So now to break each of these texts to be individual, I just have to press Ctrl K. Then Ctrl K. Now I have only the D and the O standing alone. Now to break this apart, Ctrl K. But I don't think I need to break that one apart, but I need to break this top part apart. Ctrl K and the J, U, S, and T are just standing alone. Now I'll show you guys why I'm doing all of these things. So now I'll have to now bring in my shoe. Okay. Then shift page up because the shoe is way behind. So just click on shift page up. And then I just enlarge my shoe this way. And uh, then I think I'll just let me put this shoe aside for now. Uh, enlarge this more. I'll enlarge this the more huh? something like this okay I think this is cool and I just bring in my text so now before I do that I will need to this text I'll need to you know skew it make it slanty so let me just cut this part away then I'll make this my text slanty go over here sorry I don't need to go back to the shape tool sorry just tap again then all these points are going to show then I just skew it to the left a bit. But before I do that, let me make a duplicate of this. Let me make a duplicate of my text. So I just highlight everything. Like I always say, make what? Always make a duplicate. So I just select all, tap again, then skew it this way. I think like this is okay. Yeah, this is okay. So I just group everything and then put it at the middle on group then paste in my shoe now what i want to do is to make sure i kind of create this sort of effect where i can bring this particular text to the front okay okay just something like this then i can maybe bring uh this j to the front let me say i work on this j open it to bring it to the front and maybe this T I'll bring to the front also something like this I just want to create this effect of maybe uh, let me see what if I bring this eye to the front this okay I need to bring these text apart so let me just bring the eye to the front something like this mm, is this cool nope let me leave it this way so now that I've done that I will now have to color my text okay let me just color my text, then I'll give you this particular color. So, Shift, Ctrl, E to activate your color eyedropper. And I click on it. And I do the same for this down part. And I 
click on the color. Now you see why I was saying we are going to do a bit of anti-design today. This is not much of a contrast, but at least you can see it, and it's a bit what different from the normal ones you know. So the next thing we are going to do now is to bring in shadow. Now there are various ways you can actually apply shadow to this particular uh, to this particular stuff. There are different ways you can apply shadow. Now one of those ways is you can go to your shadow tool, okay, and you can apply shadow this way. You can just apply your shadow this way, something like this, which is what many people would do. Normally, you know, maybe just increase it, then you go back to your feather. Now let's put it at maybe 50 or let's say 40 or 30, maybe something like this. This is what many people would do normally, okay. Now this is also cool, okay, but now let's try this in a different way. So I'm just going to copy this particular stuff we've done, create a new page and paste it. Now I can also make a shadow in this form, just like what we did before, but I don't want to use this method. So let me just make this a bit, uh, you know, let me remove the shadow we've already applied before. Then I'll just come over to my ellipse tool, then I'll come down here, then I'll drag a little circle. I'll drag a little circle down here. Okay, I'll drag a little circle down here. Okay, um, not really a circle, but you get the point. So um, now we've done that. So I'll just quickly have to, um, let's say, give it 80% black. Okay, then I'll remove the outline. Okay, then I will start adjusting the circle a bit or the ellipse we just drew. Now adjust it so that it can align properly to give you that shadow, you know, that kind of shadow effect like when something is being suspended. Then I'll go over to my transparency tool. Then I'll apply a transparency in this method. So now um, maybe something like this. So I'll just you know, do something like this. Not something obvious, but if you can see, it's still looking artificial though. Understand me, so it's still looking artificial. So, what I'll do is now, since it's still looking artificial, I can um, do something. So, go to my effects, go to blur, then I'll go to Gaussian blur. Now, you start adjusting your blur till you get to what you want. So, you see, you see how the thing is now becoming um, really, really realistic like the shadows are becoming realistic. So, let's just put it at uh, 15. Okay, so you can see that 15 should do well for us. So you see how it has blended properly now. So let's increase, um, let's kind of reduce the transparency a bit to see, to give it more depth, you know, to give the shadow effect more depth. So you can see what we are really doing here. So that is basically how you can actually apply this particular shadow. So you can just adjust it till you get to a particular point you want to give it so I take this uh, the D to the front of the shadow so that it will really be in front of everything. So let's uh, reduce the transparency a bit again. Uh, or should I say increase it? You know, just adjust it till we get to what we want. So something like this is is very nice to go. So this is how you can uh, create this effect. So you can see that we've been able to create two shadow effects. Now we apply the logo of Nike. Now let's not forget our margin, okay? You have to apply the logo according to the margin of the uh, stuff. So we cut it out and bring it outside of the power clip so that we can really look at our margin properly and apply it very, very well. So now we've done that, okay? So we just adjust it to the margin a bit. Then if we are satisfied with what we have, we just power clip it back into the stuff. And there you go. There you have your stuff you can also put it at the top side if you want if you don't want the logo to be down you can take it to the top side and just drag it up holding your shift key and then you can put it at the top if that would be better i think that's classic nike right to put it at the top that's classic nike so uh, mostly at the top left so you can reduce it if you want if it's too big for you you can as well just reduce it or you can just copy it and take it to the next page and we paste that we can have you know we don't really have to come as that aligning the nikes again you don't need to go through that stress so as you can see where well, you can see the first shadow we did the first shadow effect we did and you can see how we're able to achieve that so let's just adjust this a bit let's adjust this a bit um, you know just give it some originality kind of so you can see how this shadow effect is so whichever one you want to choose you can either go for the shadow effect 
okay you can either go for the shadow effects or you can go for the other one so imagine we had uh, gone with a black color for example now you can see how things would have turned out to be very very bad so let's just um, drag this to get the orange color let's say we went for it's one of the orange colors uh, something like this uh, so let's say we had gone with orange color now things would have been looking all nice things would have been, would have been looking kind of weird and ill so but but at least now you can get why sometimes even that color if you might not work is what will work so if you see this shadow we've done here okay so you see how we're able to do this in this particular point so we can just apply effect now which is noise to add a uh, texture to it so i'm using 50 by 50 so we just we apply texture to this so the next thing we're going to do is instead of going back to the other place to apply texture we just have to copy the background that we already created so we didn't copy it correctly so let's go back to this side what we copied was the shoe so we just make sure we select the background that we've applied texture to then we come over here delete this particular one delete paste ctrl v then shift page down to take it to the back side okay shift page down and it goes over that way so um i think we need i think we need to touch on the logo a bit the nike logo i think we need to touch on the nike logo so let's reduce it a bit you know Nike is a very known to you know that logo is always there but not something too huge so we copy it and paste it to the other side and just you know delete this one and then paste the new one so this is how you can create a very simple Nike logo and you can export it if you want just Ctrl E to export and there you go so um, I think that is all there is to in this particular tutorial and if you love this particular video please subscribe to our youtube channel or like this video and subscribe to our youtube channel so that more people can get to see it and uh, please share this video with more creatives so that they can get to see this tutorial video also and i'll be leaving you guys here to the next tutorial video where i'll be showing you guys on how to get resources online and until then stay safe and stay healthy and if you want to improve your skills in graphic design click on any video showing on your screen until then stay safe namaste